In Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, the gargoyle is described as a malevolent creature from the elemental plane of Earth that takes on the appearance of a fiendish statue with wings. They were known to inhabit ruins and buildings with sweeping architecture, delighting in catching adventurers unaware and tormenting them upon coming out of their stationary poses. The gargoyle in D&D has an AC of 15 and 52 hit points, with a walking speed of 30 and a flying speed of 60. They have a plus 2 to strength, a 0 to dex, a plus 3 to constitution, a negative 2 in intellect, a 0 to wisdom, and a negative 2 to charisma. They are resistant to all non-magical, non-adamantine weapon strikes, and are completely immune to poison damage. They are also immune to exhaustion, as well as being petrified or poisoned. They have a terrible passive perception of 10, but they do have dark vision up to 60 feet. They speak Terran, the language of their elemental plane of origin, and have the trait False Appearance, in which if they remain completely still, they become completely indistinguishable from a statue. They have a multi-attack consisting of a single bite and swipe with their claws. Both attacks have a plus 4 to hit, with both of them dealing 1d6 plus 2 piercing, a damage potential of 3 to 8, and a total turn damage potential of 6 to 16. As a DM, I would place gargoyles in their preferred turf, a ruin that is absolutely littered in statues. If your party is very low level, I would suggest only one gargoyle at a time, but for slightly higher parties or ones with more than four members, I would strategically place multiple gargoyles on rooftops and other high up areas so that they have a bird's eye view of the map and can watch out for enemies. If your players are making an attempt to be stealthy, they might be able to avoid the gargoyles altogether, as their passive perception is very low. But if someone isn't being stealthy, or the overall role is poor, you're your gargoyles will see the party right away. I would have gargoyles positioned around a battle area only 30 feet or so off the ground. This way they can initiate combat by diving down on the players closest to them. I would have each gargoyle target a different player and use their multi-attack, then use any remaining movement to get out of the range of melee players, taking an opportunity attack as a trade-off. When fighting range players, I would use the fly speed to keep pace with them, ensuring that they cannot escape the multi-attack. A true gargoyle is not just a statue. It serves the purpose of being a water spout or drain meant to send water off of a roof and away from a building. Any that are simply statues are actually called grotesques and are meant to stave off evil spirits and plunderers, but the two terms have been used interchangeably in the modern world. The term gargoyle likely comes from the French word gargui, which loosely translates to throat or gullet, which directly relates to the water spout purpose of these statues. Most of us know gargoyles from architecture, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, or the cult classic TV show Gargoyles, but the gargoyles that cover many old buildings and churches do have a mythical origin. La Gorgui was a legend that was associated with Saint Romanus, who claimed to have saved people from a massive beast with bat-like wings and fire breath, and then severed its head. The head was so hot from the beast's own fire that it could not be destroyed, so instead it was mounted on the side of the newly built church in the area to be used as a protective ward, and also as a drain to get the water away from the building. The combination of its fiery flesh and the water turned it to stone. Interestingly enough, Enough, while the term gargoyle is French and used typically to refer to medieval stonework, we find similar stone creatures on places of worship such as chimeras on the Temple of Zeus in Olympia, or the lion-headed versions of gargoyles found in ancient Egyptian ruins. In comparing the monster to the myths, we find that only the descriptions are similar. The D&D monster retains the imagery of a devilish creature with bat wings, but none of the fire-breathing properties of its namesake myth. What I find most interesting is that gargoyles in medieval contexts were meant to be deterrents of evil, while the monster in D D&D, and most contemporary fantasy, is portrayed as a malicious, violent beast that seeks to destroy everything it comes across. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month, link in the description below, to access videos days before they're posted here, as well as other exclusive stuff like short stories, videos, and more. For all of my other content, you can find me on Twitch at Moglaru, YouTube and TikTok at Moglaru Streams, or my website, mwjgilmore.com.